Anyway, <laughs> Indiana. Uh, Talia Goodman, my daughter's a freshman there. She was at the game tonight, and uh, she's feeling pretty good, as are Indiana fans, about their Hoosiers right now. They came into the year picked to win the Big Ten. Uh, they were struggling. They've now won five straight, and they beat an Ohio State team that is absolutely reeling. Uh, they've lost seven of eight, and Chris Holtman's getting a lot of heat in Columbus right now. Uh, but let's get to first uh, the Indiana Hoosiers. And I have been raving about Jalen Hood Shafino all year, all year. And rightfully so. Here's my take on Jalen Hood Shafino now. If Indiana can get Xavier Johnson back, and they got to get him back soon here, we're almost in February, they got to get him back in the next couple of weeks. And I'm not sure that's going to happen. But if they do and they get him healthy, and now you got Jalen Hood Shafino feeling really good about his game. You know, not as a backup point guard, not as a secondary ball handler, as a guy that can run the team, that makes shots because he made shots tonight. And Trace is playing the way he's playing. I think Indiana can be a second weekend team and and maybe even beyond. I think they've got everything. And now they're bringing Race Thompson off the bench, which is what he should be. You can't play Trace and Race together. Race off the bench, spread people out a little bit. They're making shots collectively. This Indiana team has found it, its groove now, Rob. Um, am I off? No, I, I'm I'm very much in on Indiana. Very, very much in on Indiana. And the biggest reason is 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 your boy Hood Shafino. Um, awesome. Yeah, like I I did not. I knew he had this in him, right? I did not expect it to be at the level that we've seen over the course of like the last probably five weeks. I mean, he he's been terrific. I didn't realize he was as good on the ball as he has been. I knew he could score and I knew he could create a little bit, but I think that his emergence as a guy that can handle lead guard duties is just, it's been so impressive. And you're exactly right. Like if, if Xavier Johnson can come back and can embrace, oh. embrace the, the role that he, I don't even want to say role and can embrace the fact that like hood Shafino is awesome. And he does, and you know, and, and he doesn't have to have all of the shots in the back, or if he can kind of share those duties. I, I've made this point a million times. If you look at the last ten or eleven teams that have won a national title, yep. they all yeah. ha- they all have yeah. two lead guards, right? They yes. all play two guys together in the backcourt. Kansas didn't last year, right? That was the first time since uh, I want to say two thousand and nine, North Carolina, when Tyler Hansborough had Ty Lawson, right? right. Look at uh, Baylor had Jared Butler and Davion. Um, Davion Mitchell. You had in 2018 Jalen Brunson and Dante DiVincenzo and uh and um the guy on, on the Suns down blanking on his name. If you look at 2016, Jalen Brunson and Ryan, like Peyton Seaver, Russ Smith, all of these teams have two lead guards, Matt. Had and and yeah. yeah, and and now you can have that with Indiana. Both of those guys are awesome. We've seen Xavier Johnson be an all big 10 caliber player. Jalen Huchafino has been an all big 10 caliber player the last five weeks. And by, oh, by the way, Trace Jackson Davis is averaging like 25, awesome. 15, four assists and four player blocks the over the course of right. the last three weeks. Yes. Like, player of the year type numbers over the last, yes. that stretch. And what, what Trace has done is, is pass the hell out of the ball and it's giving guys easy looks. So a lot of those complimentary guys, are making shots now they're getting on and, and like and, and trey galloway has been really good awesome. miller cop is like yeah. he's he's doing a job he hasn't been great he's doing a job malik renault was role, awesome guys. tonight yeah race thompson like is a guy that just understands his job it's just that like this I, I, who's your daddy man like I, I i am very much in on this being the team that we thought it was going to be right now not even, even without xavier john right now and then if you could add Xavier Johnson and he's, and he's good Xavier Johnson, all of a sudden, like, this team gets really scary really quickly. And here's the biggest thing, Matt. The last five games, this five-game winning streak, they're giving up an average of 61.2 points. If you look at the last two weeks, they have been the number seven team on Torvik in uh, adjusted defensive efficiency. That's why they're winning games now. It's not just they got good players. They're getting stops. But they're making shots, too. They're, it's both ends. It's both ends. That's the beauty of this team right now. Last year, they couldn't shoot, but they guarded. You know, now they're doing both over the last five, six years. I, I just, does anyone else hear me keep trying to throw it to Matt, trying to give Matt touches and <laughs> Jeff Goodman going full Xavier Johnson and just yeah. taking my, my it, just letting that thing this, fly, here's, baby. Here's, here's my only thing, <laughs> is when they do inject him back into the team, how does everybody respond? 
because yeah, roles will be different. It's just yes. going to be different. And are you accepting of it? And hey, this guy's a really good player, and now he's healthy, and our team. And are you going to come back? Are right. you going to come back, Matt, as a complimentary piece? Are you even going to want to come back? The, if it's that is the biggest keys. Where where does is there going to be yeah. breakdown in the locker room? Is there going to totally. be someone's upset? Yes. Now I'm pissed because I'm not getting the shots I want. What the, this guy's back? He's taking my minutes. How am I doing? And now they're kind of rolling and everybody kind of understands their roles. And, Hey, I know I'm getting these minutes. I'm getting that. Now he comes back. Is everybody accepting of that? Like that's going to be the biggest thing. I think they're playing well. I think they're playing at a high level. I think they're a second weekend team in the NCAA tournament, the way they're playing right now. But when he comes back, how does everybody respond to that? Because that, that, that is the biggest challenge in terms of, of Mike Woodson in terms of coaching, in terms of everything. It's not the X's and O's and we got to run that. It's like, hey, where's your locker room at? And how is everybody getting along in the locker room? And where's your culture at? And now this guy's been out and who's pissed when he comes back? Who's pissed? Some Someone's going to be upset. Someone's going to be upset. Or if they're not, then now you can talk about winning the championship. Bottom line. Yeah, do, you th- do you think Xavier Johnson is going to be standing on top of the scoreboard throwing iron pipes at people trying to hit him? Hopefully not. I'm I'm scared to go there in a couple of weeks if something's going to fall down and hit us.